Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress 2014 Anvil Quested. And this is our second appendix episode where, if you've been watching the past few videos, you will know that one, we were attacked by a were elephant, and two, we received a trade caravan and diplomat from our home civilization providing us with some rather grim news that our civilization is really taking it on the chin against a goblin civilization and losing a lot of lands. So I fired up the Legends viewer to take a look at these events and see how they are transpiring. So first of all, I'm here at Anvil Quested, our home, and you'll see here we have a new event, the Beast Attack, the Rampage of Unknown Beast with two deaths. So if you look at this, in mid-autumn of 150, Sandstone the 11th, I believe Sandstone might be October, not entirely sure, the dwarf Rimtar Banner Fountain bled to death, slain by the human Dazla Ringdons, the Abyssal Cyclopean Jungles. Now, Dazla is the were-elephant. So let's take a look at Dazla here. Now, the fact that she has multiple names, that is Dazla Ringdons, the Abyssal Cyclopean Jungles, is a title that she was given because she's a notable historical entity. She's killed many things. Our dwarves as well, once they are in many battles, and if we have any dwarves that kill a lot of goblins or other enemies, they too will be given historical names and titles. And if we're lucky, some of them may even choose to name their weapons really cool historical names, and so their weapons themselves will become historical objects that may be passed on to other dwarves if those initial dwarves were to die. So, Dazla Ringdons was a human who was a member of the Confederation of Hale, a human civilization. Let's see where the Confederation of Hale is located for the most part. Okay, so they are down here in the southwestern corner of the world, south of the mountains and to the west of this giant lake here. And they're a rather large and well spread out human confederation. It looks like she was born in 89 and she has killed 15 creatures. The first creature she killed was a troll in 122 and then I assume as a were elephant she killed a number of humans, 13 humans, and finally, before dying, she killed a dwarf, Rimtar Banner Fountains, who was the merchant visiting our fortress. She was also involved in nine separate rampages on different places. Crew safety, cloak prank, crew safety again, bush voices, creamy realm. Oh, that sounds like a fun place to be. And uh, peak waves. And then bush voices again, and finally board fire. So... She was born in 89, and she was married in 101, at the whew, ripe age of 12, <laughs> to Pado Gleamed Closets, and she and Pado settled in Fealty Cloud, which is one of the hamlets. It's a hamlet, so a small village in this confederation of Hale. And she lived a pretty normal life, up until about... 123, where another Pado, not her husband, Pado Riddle Dwellers, the Flaxen Tundras, bit her. Now she survived this attack, and that's pretty unfortunate because when you were attacked by a werebeast, it's probably best that you die. Because what happened was she was cursed and she became a werebeast herself, in this case, a were elephant. So that all started in 123, and she since began wandering the climatic steppes. What's one thing I wish this program had was I wish it separated out the biomes so you could see where the climatic steps are on the map and where the boundaries of them are. That would be really helpful. The only reason I know the areas that our dwarves are are because I remember when the game first started, you're able to move around and it'll tell you. We're in the Great Walls, that's the mountain range, and uh, the something jungles. But she devoured a bunch of people who weren't very important and then attacked a human, did a bunch of stuff, but she eventually found her way to our fortress where she bled out due to a swords dwarf, and that swords dwarf was Enod Tall Kinks, or Talk Inks, actually. Wow, that makes a big difference how you pronounce that. And this dwarf has really no history, but now 
he is a hero because he not only defeated Dazla, but he saved our fortress in the meantime. Because remember now, we didn't have any military. We didn't see her until she was almost upon us, and it could have been it could have been tragic. But this brave sword dwarf, whose goal in life is to master a skill, slayed, 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 killed her. <laughs> and that was the end of that. So that is what's going on with our fortress. But let's take a look at our civilization, the Ageless Manor. As you recall from our first appendix episode, the Ageless Manor is a peaceful nation, and up until recently, we have never known war since the founding of the world till 150. Unfortunately, now that 150 is upon us, we do know war, and we are fighting with the Bridled Evils, a goblin civilization. And unfortunately, the Bridled Evils are getting the better of that war. They have conquered 15 of our 50 sites. You can see here all these green squares. This represents a site that was taken over in 150 by the Bridled Evils. Now, the Bridled Evils are a civilization that lives in this river valley here to the southeast of our main civilization. They're actually quite close to us. They've waged war against numerous other civilizations, primarily elven civilizations. And they are currently at war with us, but also the Plated Empires, which are a human civilization, but not a good civilization as such, rather a necromancer tower. So you've got these evil necromancer humans fighting these evil goblins who are also fighting us. And so that's a problem. That's, that's not a good thing. So it says here that they have, in this war against us, they have not won any battles and they've only won one site. Well, that is not true, unless by that they mean conquered the site, whereas all these other sites they have simply destroyed. That could be it, too. Let's look at the map here. Let's look at Toggle Civilizations and Toggle Wars. Okay. Well, as you can see, a lot is going on. Here is the Necromancer Tower that is fighting with our goblin enemies. And here is our civilization. Now, you can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. You can see that when it is darker gray, that means the site has been destroyed or taken over. It still belongs to us, so I don't... Maybe it's just because the year hasn't ended yet. Maybe if I were to do this export in the following year, they would be green or they would be gone. But for right now, at least it's acknowledging that those sites have been defeated. And we're talking hundreds and hundreds of dwarves. It also appears that the goblins are doing a number on the kingdoms of fainting, as they are also being beat up by apparently a different goblin civilization. But if you want to see how it all kind of relates, here they are. Here are the Bridled Evils. They're following this river in this little valley here. And here's our civilization. Now we're on the southern edge of this mountain range and we also kind of straddle this desert. But they've really taken out the eastern portion of our empire. Now you'll notice something quite interesting, which is if you look here, You'll notice that this Dwarven Hillox is a different icon than all the rest. This is the northeastern Dwarven civilization who for some reason has started a fortress down here in the midst of our civilization. I don't believe there's any mechanic currently for two Dwarven civilizations to be at war, so I'm sure we will have a peaceful coexistence. But it's worth noting because these goblins are very aggressive and they are taking over our sites at an alarming pace so one day, they may indeed come to haunt us up here in Anvil Quested. Another thing you'll notice is that this elven civilization here is spreading out all over the world. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, what are they doing? Founding cities? But they're not. What they're actually doing is they're conquering caves and, like, random evil sites. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do with them if they actually develop them in this new version and so if you were to go later on as an adventurer if you would find elves there or if they just clear them out and leave like an adventuring party I'm not entirely sure but if you look at these webs here you'll see that the elves are basically hopping all over the world and taking out caves which I guess is a good thing for the world I suppose I... depends on how how nice or unnice the elves are to us at any particular time so that's the story. I did want to get some information on the leader of this goblin attack, this human who seems to be leading them. However, they don't exist. I've done a search for them. I have the name written down, 
and I've done a search and they do not exist in the files. I'm not certain why, maybe they will after this year is over. The only thing I can get is if you actually look at this war that we are in here, this uh, war with the goblins, the, where does it say? The roasted conflict, it looks like a separate action. The roasted conflict is against us and the same goblin culture, but it's only a small group of them, and they actually took over the land. 14 conquests, actually. But they actually settled one of them. Yeah, look at the... They conquested all these. So actually, this is the main... This is the main war. The Roasted Conflict, where they've conquested 14 of our sites. Whereas, the Crazed Conflict was more a small group of goblins called the Devil of Chewing. Like, for instance, our seven dwarves were a group as well. The Mountains of Confusion, I believe we were. And these goblins conquered... Or... They defend... No. Yes. So, anyways, sorry. We were still on the receiving end of that. And these guys, the Devil of Chewing, were led by a particular person who does show up in the history... Let's see here. Ah, took over Bridge Braids. Okay, so Bridge Braids was... This city here was actually taken over by the goblins. And it was taken over by... Dum -dum 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 -dum. Neo Conjured Dimmed. Now, Neo is a pretty bad dude. He killed three dwarves. Not in battle, but he executed them. One, Alath Seal Wires, he drowned. Kib Drill Glove, he hacked to pieces, and Logum Boulder Tundras, he buried alive. So, this guy is kind of a jerk, and hopefully we'll be able to take him out later, but he is now the leader, mayor, or whatever, of the city that they took from us, Bridge Braids. So, that's a problem. Hopefully, our Dwarven Civilization will get their act together, and will fight against these goblins and take some territory back. I mean, I certainly hope so. We do have many, many fortresses left, so hopefully we can do things. We we still have 3,626 dwarves, so, you know, we're a, we're a force to be reckoned with, supposedly. But that's really the deal. And that's all I have to talk about in this appendix episode. So, we know a little bit about the were elephant and where she came from and what her history was it's a sad story because with the exception of the curse she's just like us and she didn't mean any harm but we had to put her down and then finally our civilization is in dire straits but this may impact us all the way up north in anvil quested because the refugees who are fleeing from these sites that are being taken over by goblins may show up at our fort We'll be able to look at them and they'll say, oh, they settled in Bridge Braids, for example, and then they fled Bridge Braids and they ended up in Anvil Quested, which might be good for us. They might come with some skills that we could use to really benefit our fortress. So, once again, I'm Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.